area. What is this? Oh, sexy torso. I only say sexy because it's of stone. If it would be an actual human torso, I would not say sexy. You know, that's <laughs> that's not me. Let's play the Colossus. It's coming! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ulanu. <laughs> play short in your games and laughs at our own jokes. Um, today I'm going to play a narrative game or an experience experimental and abstract narrative experience to go in tandem with an album that I have not listened to um, by Auric Echoes and it has the same name the Colossus is coming I'm quite sure that the music will probably be part of the game because otherwise it would be weird you know um, anyways I will link to both the game and the album in the liner notes and this looks so interesting. It's in black and white, very moody, and it's you it's about someone who uncovers the story of a mysterious colossus through a series of cassette tapes as you do. I mean, no. Um <laughs> and I love everything gigantic. Like I have this I have this uh, weakness in horror especially for things and creatures that are just super big. I don't know why. It's um it's one of the things I absolutely adore, so I can't wait to play this. I don't know if you know, there's a sh short story by Clive Barker in the mountains in the city. I won't spoil it because it can be really spoiled. But if you like Colossus stories, that will be it will be mind blowing, really. Okay, let's fire games. Reminds me of fire festival. It's okay. <laughs> wow, this feels a bit like the intro to The Last of Us because you also there have this environmental noise from the wind and everything. Okay, let's begin. I love a cinematic intro. I love it. It puts you in the right mood. Based on the music of Auric Echoes. Ah! That's -a me! Also, there's an interactive expansion to the Auric Echoes album. Also, I really love. Um, when video games tie in with other stuff like uh, movies or whatever there's a few video games used as marketing material for movies or inspired by movies and I always think that's a really neat idea for like more interaction so we have a gramophone and a cassette player wow. oh we can't click on this yet and it's a really small area what is this oh sexy torso I only say sexy because it's of stone. If it would be an actual human torso, I would not say sexy. You know, that's <laughs> that's not me. Oh, there's the first tape. Blop. And that's a uh, female presenting sculpture. That's an old wheelchair. What's this? Cigarettes? A gramophone. Also, this is a, a clock. Huh. Okay. I just wanna... I know, I have the tape in hands. I'm oh, sorry. So this is the cover art for the album, I guess. Okay, let's put the... let's put the tape in. It's coming. Play the tapes. I'm doing it. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. That was it. It's going to play the tapes, but I just did play the tape. 
Oh, the gramophone is gone. Who stole it? There's a second tail. That wasn't. Up, 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 up. Mannequin jump scare? Oh well. Oh well. Just like with the something running at you jump scares, you get one. You get one from me, and after that, I'm annoyed. out. It was a little bit cold, but not too bad. But on the walk, I came across to the figure, maybe 20 feet away from me. Uh, he, he was really skinny, slender, just super tall. He was wearing all black, his eyes were kind of sunken in, and he seemed like he was hurt. Not not like a physical hurt, but like torment. He was all hunched over looking at the ground. I yelled out. Uh, see if I can get his name, oh, see if he was feeling something. okay, uh, but the, there was no response. He didn't say anything, he didn't actually really acknowledge I was there, he just kept staring at the ground. So we stood there, about 20 feet between us, seemed like a while, uh, not actually quite sure, I don't remember much. Uh. Then, the weird thing happened, uh, he, he just started walking towards me. There was no provocation, he just started walking. Quite slowly, that, especially for a man of his stature. He, he didn't look up to see me, he didn't make eye contact, he just kept walking. I got this strange sense of unease dread. And I'm not sure why, but I just, just turned around and started to run. I, I knew I had to get as far away from whatever this person was as I could. So I started running, and I felt like I was running fast. So I turned around to look at the figure, expecting to see something chasing me. But what I saw was just him walking. He didn't match my pace. He wasn't running after me. He just looked at the ground and kept walking. So I looked away. Oh, Jesus. Sound jump scare. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. You know what? The reading reminds me a lot of the No Sleep podcast. If you like unnerving horror stories and are a podcast person, then... Oh. What was that? That was a little wiggle? Probably because the next tape was loading. Yeah. Um... And if you like this kind of storytelling, like the style of reading, then you'll super enjoy. Like, No Sleep Podcast has some of the greatest short stories. Like, just really, and the way he reads them is just really calm like this, really relaxed. Like he's telling a story, just a random, you know, something that happened to him. And they are so, they're really good. Okay, let's see what skinny dude is up to. I don't exactly remember how long I'd run for, but it, it had to have been at least a half hour. I, I was really tired, I had to stop, and I came upon an old man, and he was sitting on a bench. He looked really peaceful and content. I asked him if I could join him sitting down, and he said yeah. So I sat next to the old man, uh, and he asked me why I was running, and I told him. And he said that that was a really silly reason to be running. I didn't really say anything back. I just kind of looked onward. He turned and told me not to be scared. And I told him I'd do my best. We sat there for a while without talking. Eventually, he says, Hey, kid. And I say, yeah. He says, do you see that over there? And he raises his arm and points out a finger at nothing. And I say, no, I, I don't. He relaxes and says, oh, never mind then. I just put my head down confused. I, I sat there thought for a minute or two, but then I realized, oh, I, I never actually got the guy's name, uh, so I looked up and started to ask, uh, but, I mean, like, just like that, the man was gone. I, I didn't know what to do at that point, so I just got up and started running again. Oh! Oh, it's dark now. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Don't even like that. Also, are these bones? I just noticed. That's 
Was that here before? Is that the old man? Oh, that's good. I wouldn't be so polite. If I'm like, I'm followed by a weird colossus. That's why I was so scared. Also, I wouldn't sit down to have a chat, you know, to be quite honest. Um, and then someone would be like, yeah, it's just in your imagination. It's so weird that you're doing this. Why are you doing this? And like, old man, shut the fuck up. You know, if I'm scared, I'm scared. And you're a stranger, so I don't even... Pff, I don't give a shit what you have to tell me. <laughs> Makes it seem like I'm a really unpleasant person in real life, but I am a absolutely delighted. <laughs> I just, it, it felt like I was running with more force than I ever have in my entire life. My, my stomach burned, my chest felt like a drum. With every single step, I was packing down the dirt, throwing clouds behind me. I, I just couldn't stop. The, the momentum was too much. But no matter how fast I ran, it was always just walking. Anytime I turned my head, anytime I closed my eyes, he, he somehow gained ground. No matter what kind of lead I had, or thought I had, whenever I looked back, he was right there. So I just stopped looking, and I kept running. I had to keep moving. One foot, then the other. Ooh. Can we already see him? Will we get a glimpse? Of the skinny colossus. You know, colossuses usually are quite uh, like muscly people. <laughs> Hardly ever just skinny. I also wonder how, I mean, a colossus for me is like gigantic. That's not even, you know, oh, it's a very tall and skinny person. It's like, holy shit. You know, like um, Attack of the Titans. Like, that's a colossus for me. Okay, let's look for the last tape. Oh, there it is. That's That wasn't a big... But those bones, uh, I don't like them. Did you always have this skull in your hand? Mannequin? Hmm. I was more tired than you could ever imagine. My heart was pounding. My chest felt like it was on fire. I just had to stop. Bent over, rested my hands on my knees. I'm starting to feel a bit cold out. I pushed off from my knees and stared straight up. And then I turned around. The figure was still there, about 20 feet from me. He was still walking really slowly towards me, uh, but I couldn't really bring myself to run anymore. I just stared at him as he walked up to me. But about three feet away from me, he just stopped. We made eye contact for a moment or two. Uh, his face was a lot softer than I remember. After that moment or two, the figure squatted down. He sat on the ground, his long legs crisscrossed. I had followed him. We just sat there, looking at each other. And then he looked at me, and he said, uh, You know you don't have to run for me, right? His voice was a lot lighter than I expected. And I said, Yeah. He asked me if I was scared. And I said, yeah. And then he asked me why. I thought for a moment. I just told him I didn't know. He told me that was okay, but that I really didn't have to be worried. And I said, I know. He was really nice to talk to. We sat there for another moment or two, silent. Then the figure stood up, and I followed right behind him. He told me he'd be back to see me again someday, and I asked him when. He stopped, thought for a second, uh, before turning back and simply responding with, Someday. I said, okay. Then he turned to leave, uh, but before he could, I stopped him. Excuse me, sir, I asked. Uh, I never did quite catch your name. He turned back to me, and then he told me. Then he carried on his way. It's Greg. I watched his <laughs> tall frame disappear into the distance. I was there all alone. I stood for a moment to take in the cold air. 
then I figured I didn't really have much to be out there for anymore. Uh, so I turned around and I walked home. You didn't have much to be out there anymore, so you need to be followed by a skinny colossus to go outside? That's a weird reason to be outside. I don't know, that was the story was a little bit anticlimactic. Um I mean will I see the Colossus? I wanna Is the gramophone back? No. Also, it is kind of scary to say, we'll see each other again, but I won't tell you when. Oh, what? Where? But this was good. Oh, this was nice. That ending was really good. You were distracted by one of three gramophones. <laughs> there were three gramophones to get distracted by. You were forced to accept the Colossus. Always, always. I accept the Colossus in my heart. Um, hello, I just wanted to quick uh, this quick message to thank you for taking the time to engage with this short experience I've made. I do really appreciate you being here to support my artistic efforts as I continue to evolve as both a game developer and as a musician. I really don't think I would be here making the things I am with you all being here. Without you, probably? Probably. <laughs> if you weren't aware, I'm both the creator of Fire Games as well as the musical artist behind Auric Echoes. This actually isn't a standalone game, rather an interactive extension to my latest album entitled The Colossus is Coming. It's an art rock, experimental rock album. Yeah, I figured that when I heard this stuff from the gramophone. I've been writing and recording over the past couple of years, and it's a project that truly means the world to me. It has a lot of influences ranging from electronic music to contemporary jazz to and a uh, noise rock. I would greatly appreciate also noise, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would greatly appreciate you giving the album a listen. If you're fans of musical artists like Radiohead or Bjork, I think you'll really enjoy it. Who isn't? Who isn't? I mean, at least one of them, you know. You don't have to be a Radiohead fan because sometimes it can be a little bit sad, but Bjork is amazing. It's available, also, I like Radiohead. I just, just saying, I can more understand if you don't like Radiohead than if you don't like Bjork, but ma. Well, that's just me. <laughs> it's available on every major streaming service. I would also like to ask you to possibly donate to me and my studio. This way I can continue to make the art that I love while going through college and onward. Any amount of money or any number of music streams are more helpful than you could ever imagine. With all of that said, thank you again for being here and making my life just a bit better for it. You're all amazing. Connor Rush, aka The Colossus. No, that was just me. Um, yeah, I will link, I will link both uh, the album and uh, the game to my liner notes. I really liked it. I thought the story's ending was a little bit... It was probably something, you know, like he told me the na his name um, and then went on his way and then, you know, the narrator doesn't say the name. It's probably like, I'm death or whatever, you know, I'm Father Time. I'm Father Christmas. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Just, you know, doing my morning workout routine um so i thought that was a little bit anticlimactic because i thought oh it's you know it started so good and so creepy because just someone following you um i mean you know just like the movie it follows it's it's a creepy concept it just is you know um and i always like that because it feels so inevitable which is why i think skinny colossus was death or whatever you know because i just visit you once more, but I don't say when. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it, Father Death. You can just tell me, you know, a mother death or a person death. Why should death have a gender? I don't even know. Anyways, yeah, but I like the whole mood of both the story and the game. Um, I think the narration was really, really good. I like the music also. Uh, it was just a tiny bit I heard because apparently I missed the two gramophones because it was too enwrapped in the story. Um, and I thought the ending was really good. Like, that was a great ending. We didn't see the Colossus, but honestly, 
I think when it's when it's done this way, which is really well, you know, with the noise and everything and the cracking trees and then the falling trees, I don't need to see it. Like, I have enough nightmares in my head, you know, living there rent-free to conjure up the most, the most horrible colossus I can think of. So that's, that's all I need. So I thought the game in itself was really, really good. So yeah, thank you, developer. Connor and also thank you to the viewers for watching me and you know uh, listening as well and um, I if you if you like this video you can like blah 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 uh, you can also comment how you liked it who do you think skinny Colossus was do you have a theory do you agree with me was it death or do you think it was some something or someone else do you have a theory I'd like to hear it and also if you're new to this channel and you enjoy spooky little story heavy indie horror games then you know just subscribe I guess and I promise you I will not follow you just randomly you know seeing you run away scared and still continue following you without saying anything and I also won't be like super mysterious about it you know I'll just be like but I will see you again someday you know I will be heads-on like I'm a very pragmatic communicator so you know subscribe I guess <laughs> anyways I hope you had a good time I hope you have a wonderful day and maybe see you soon bye 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 this is my self-recorded outro song so I don't get hit with copyright claims if you subscribe you subscribe to a lot of fun tutorials reviews and let's plays